In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use the standardized and normal distribution formulas in Excel. So here we've got our example problems from the lecture on the right, and I'll just walk you through each one. So if X is distributed normally, that means it's bell-shaped and symmetrical, with a population mean of 100 and a population standard deviation of 50, what is the Z value if X equals 250? So you actually learned about standardizing X values into Z values back in chapter three, and you learned how to do it by hand with a formula. But here, we're gonna go ahead and do it in Excel. So I'm gonna type in equals standardize, and you'll notice that Excel pre-populates, and so you can just double click on this or finish typing it. So I'm gonna just double click, saves me some time. And then it tells me what I need to plug in and in what order. So I need to plug in my X, that's my 250, comma, it asks for the mean and the standard deviation. You wanna make sure you know the Greek letters and what each one represents so that you plug in the right number in the right place. So I'm gonna do uh, my mean of 100, comma, my standard deviation of 50, and I'll close out my parentheses and then hit enter. So that we can see that when our X is 250, the corresponding Z value is three. Let's go ahead and move down to our normal distribution right here. And so we have a series of formulas for different situations. And over here on the right is the example problem from the lecture. And so each of these problems here on the right is an example of when you would use this particular formula. So this is helpful when you take a look at this, you can see, okay, so this formula here is used when I'm looking for something less than a number. This one's here is when I'm looking for greater than. So I recommend using this to kind of refresh your memory of which formula to use. But down here below, I also have some conceptual reminders. So for instance, in your uh, normal distribution formula, if we are typing in false, that means our uh, problem is not cumulative. In other words, we're trying to find the probability of an exact value, such as uh, x equals exactly three. If you're gonna use the word true in the formula, that's because it is cumulative, meaning we're using all the values less than or equal to a particular x. For instance, we want to know the probability that x is less than or equal to 3. And then if we're using 1 minus our formula, uh, including the true statement within it, then that's used to find all values greater than or equal to x. So an example would be where x is greater or equal to 3. So let's go ahead and plug in some of these values. We're actually not going to use this first one, which is the normal distribution uh, when it's not cumulative, because generally um, with normal distribution, we don't look for that precise value. Rather, we're looking for greater than or less than or perhaps in between two numbers. So we're gonna look at this first one in row eight where uh, our population is normally distributed and our mean is 100 and our standard deviation is 20. So what we're asked to find right here is the probability that our x value is less than 90. So what we'll go ahead and do is use this formula right here, and I'm going to type in, I'll type in equals norm.dist, and again, it pre-populates. If you double click on it, it'll just um, enter it in for you. So it's going to ask for the x, which is my 90, my mean, that's the 100, my standard deviation, that's the 20, and it asks, is this cumulative? And it is because we want to find all the probabilities added up that are less than 90. So I'll go ahead and type in my values, my 90 comma 100 comma 20 comma and true. And then I'll go ahead and close my parentheses and hit enter. And so our probability that we have an X value less than 90 is 0 0.3085. In the next example right here, we want to know the probability that x is greater than 130. So I'm going to use this formula right here, and you'll notice it's 1 minus norm.dist, because in Excel, when it adds up all the probabilities, it always reads left to right. Just like when we're reading a book, when we read um, the words from left to right, Excel does the same thing. So we know that by the complement rule, if I know one side of something, I can find the other side by doing one minus. So this goes back to chapter four when we learned about the complement rule. So we'll go ahead and type in equals one minus and then norm dot dist parentheses. So again, I need my X, my mean, my standard deviation, 
and uh, we'll type in true because it is cumulative, meaning we're adding up an area. So uh, I'll type in my 130, comma, our mean of 100, comma, our standard deviation of 20, comma, and true. Closing that out, I'll go ahead and hit enter. And so the probability of getting an x value that's greater than 130 is 0 0.0668. Now, what if we wanted to know the probability between two numbers, between 90 and 130? So you can see what I've done right here is we actually are just going to be using that norm.dist formula twice. But you have to be careful that you have to use the bigger number first minus the smaller number. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do equals norm.dist parentheses. We'll do our 130 comma our mean of 100 comma, our standard deviation of 20, and true, parentheses, and then minus, and type in the norm.dist again, because we have to find um, the lower part. So that'll be our 90, comma, 100, comma, 20, comma, true. Closing out and hitting enter, I get 0.6247. And so this will give me the area or the probability that I have an x value somewhere between two particular numbers. Now I've got two more formulas here. Um, this is actually when you are given a z-score or perhaps you use this formula up here to find the z-score and then want to use this for set of formulas. In the, er, these formulas that I just showed you, when you enter in all the numbers, it finds the z-score and the probability all in one. Whereas this one right here, assumes you already know the z-score and then finds the probability. So it's slightly different in the writing of the formula where it says norm.s.dist because the s means it's already been standardized in that you have a z-value. So here in our example it says um, we want to find the probability that our z-value is less than negative 0.2. And I make a little note here. So the z-score is either given to you or you've already found it or solved for it. And so I'm going to go ahead and type in equals norm.s.dist parentheses. We'll type in our z-value. That's the negative 0 0.2. And then I'll do comma and type in true. Closing out my parentheses and hitting enter, I get 0 0.4207 for my probability in this particular problem. Let's go ahead and do this next one. It's still the same idea. It's just now it's a greater than. So I'm on the other side of the number where we're going to look for the probability that z is greater than 0.6. So typing in this formula right here, we'll do equals 1 minus norm.s.dist parentheses. My z value is given to me. That's the 0 0.6. I'll do comma and then type in true, closing out and hitting enter we get the probability that our um, z value is greater than 0.6 is 0 0.2743. Now, you, you, I don't think you'll see this one in the chapter, but you might need it at some point. Let's say you want to know what the x is when you know the probability. So we're kind of like doing it in reverse. Here you're given the probability and you're working backwards. And so it's norm for the normal distribution, but the i and v, I remember it like thinking about it inversely, we're going backwards you're going to type in the probability that's given to you. Uh, you'll type in the mean that we have up here and you'll type in the standard deviation and it will tell you what the x value is going to be. So I'll type in equals norm.inv parentheses. So our probability here is 0 0.3085 comma. Our mean is the 100 and our standard deviation right here is the 20. And I'll close out and hit enter and so we can see here that our x value is 89.9979. I'm going to go ahead and round this because it's so close. So I'm going to use um, Excel to do the rounding for me by moving the decimal places away. See, so I can do that. And if you'll notice, this 90, it links back to that first one we did when we were curious about the probability of x being less than 90, that 0 0.3085 was the probability. So I really just took that first problem and did it backwards, where we were working with the probability first as opposed to working with the x value. So if you have any questions, just let me know.